Hey friends, good afternoon. And so today I want to talk a little bit about the fear of failure and how to overcome it with faith. And you see, because this morning I went somewhere and I talked to a young man who had an issue with looking at himself and feeling like he can't overcome an obstacle. And so the reason why he felt like this is because we all have felt this way. And failure has been there our entire life. But failure just always pushes us one step closer to our goal. And so when you fail, you have to get ready for flexibility. You have to overcome this fear inside of your mind. You have to get ready to overcome your toughest critics. Maybe it's someone that's at work. Maybe it's someone that plays sports with you, alongside of you, or it's coming from another school. The secret to success is the people that are able to deal with failure the best and overcome the failure. Because there's millions of little battles that they won. We have to hold on to these silent victories, these little small battles that we continue to beat. And so success you realize that success is not a straight line. You have to realize that it's a crooked road, that it goes down into the valleys where it's dark and it's scary. And back up to the mountaintops and down through potholes and bumps. And so let's look a little bit about what Jesus says about this. And so when Jesus' apostles went to heal a boy that was sick, he told them when they failed that if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you would be able to move this mountain. You would be able to take this mountain and tell it to move from here to there and it would move and nothing would be impossible. So hold up. The faith of a mustard seed? I mean, seriously, how can a mustard seed have faith, right? So let, before we get into the little seed part, what exactly where a seed has to go? Number one, a seed has to be planted. A seed has to have dirt stacked up on top of it, okay? If you take a seed and throw it on the concrete, the sun's going to get on it and burn it all up, okay? It's never going to produce any fruit that way. So it's going to get stepped on and crushed. But the logic in my mind that I cannot wrap my head around is me putting a seed in the hole in the ground and covering it with dirt, and it's going to produce fruit or vegetables. Logically, that makes absolutely no sense to me. But dirt is necessary in our growth, you see? Because dirt builds character. Dirt is necessary for growth. Dirt gives you the push through to bring it. Dirt gives you the power to come with it when you don't feel like coming with it anymore. There's a lot of dirt coming from a lot of different areas in our life right now. Because every single one of us has dirt thrown on top of us. And guess what? Dirt is not always what you want it to be. Dirt is somebody that's talking about you at your job. Dirt is somebody accusing you of something that's not true in your life. There's somebody sharing information about you that don't have business sharing about you. So everybody, young and old, gets dirt put on. But when dirt gets put on a seed, God is always working, y'all. And I could smile deep down inside of my heart to know that right now it looks awful. But when the dirt gets put on top of you, it teaches you, it develops you, it gives you something to push through. You see, because when you put the seed in soil and you pack it down, it gives you something to push through and strive for and fight through it. They don't call it dirt when it's planted. They call it soil. You know why they call it soil and not dirt? Because soil has nutrients, y'all. Because the people that are talking about you, acting up, stealing from you, doing all this foolish stuff, it's actually nutrients. I know that sounds crazy, but it's building character inside of you. If you put a camera on a seed, okay, and it starts to come up out of the ground and it's in slow motion and you see it fighting through that soil because the dirt is there for opposition, to prove yourself. The dirt is there so you can bust through it. Everything that's above ground that you see, it's blossoming, it's beautiful, it smells good. Guess where it was? Underground, under the dirt at one time. Everybody that's successful right now has been into a dark place where opposition was in every corner, okay? Now that we've discussed the opposition and people talking about you and the dirt, we're going to go ahead and talk about what exactly is the seed, okay? There's the soil. Now let's talk about the seed, okay? So what exactly is the faith of a mustard seed? I mean, what is a mustard seed? It's actually probably one of the smallest seeds that there is, okay? Here's what I believe the faith of a mustard seed means in that parable. So the faith of a mustard seed means that the code and the, the DNA strand that's inside that code 
came from God. It is a specific code that can be nothing other than a mustard seed. It can't be anything but a mustard seed. Okay? Each and every single one of us have our own identity. We all have our own code. We have all of our purposes lined up differently. We have, there's this kind of seed, there's this kind of plant, there's this kind of stuff. So that means that we all have a design purpose for our lives. So that is the code within us. And though a mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds, it is loved by God. It is nurtured by God through the sun, through the water, through the rain, through the dirt that's on top of it to pack it down, through the soil. So he created that seed to perform a purpose, y'all. Now, we take this seed and we put it in the soil and it's a very dark environment. It's isolated under the soil. There's no certainty at all in its future. Well, now we start to nurture this seed. Now we start to water the seed and water the seed and we protect that seed and we keep checking up on it every single day because we believe in the finished work of that seed and it's going to become a mustard tree. You see, now watering that seed is only half of the process. We have to depend now on the sun to warm up the soil. We have to make sure that we put it in the right spot. It can't be underneath the house. It has to be out where the sun can shine upon it. Now, to think about it, a seed is just a dry little crumb. But it grows to become a beautiful tree. And then when I really try to wrap my head around this, y'all, and how, how perfect it is, it's incredible to me. It's fascinating to me. Now, this is the parable that Jesus used right here when the disciples were having trouble. So they went out to heal someone, and Jesus used this parable to teach them a lesson. So I took it and I used it to correlate and parallel to my own life when I'm facing giants, when I'm facing failure, when I'm facing opposition. Because the faith of a mustard seed means that you are a child of God. You can be no other. You are a child of God, period. Now, it is coded within your DNA to become a spiritual being and to become a child of God. So, we choose to plant this seed of us, okay, a child of God, into circumstances of uncertainty, scary, soil, like dirt, okay? Like going to church for the first time. Maybe going to church for the first time in a long time. But we're going to be watered with the Word. And so here comes the Word. So because faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So the more we hear it, the more faith we learn to get. Then we start to change the music that we listen to. Then we start to worship God. Then we start to hang out with friends that love God. We start to pray differently. We start to start doing all this stuff. That is to me, the same exact thing as water. And the more we nurture it and continue to water it and continue to water it, now we have the soil, which is the dirt, which is forces, forces us to church to listen to things differently and to have faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So now, plants in the natural is just like in the spiritual. Whatever you starve dies. Whatever you feed grows. Now, if you're a child of God, you're not just going to let your spirit die. At some point, you're going to start to dig in and want to nurture that spirit, okay? And there's going to be a whole bunch of people ready to share the good news about Christ when you're ready to take that step, okay? Now, when you're ready for your tree to fully take root, that's one thing that we haven't talked about yet is the sun, Okay, because the parable and the correlation to what we are in our life is the Holy Spirit, which is the sun. So we have the water, the soil, and now we have the Holy Spirit, which guides us and plants and points us in the right direction and guides our steps. So this is how it looks, y'all. We have the seed, the soil, everything on top of it, the pressures of all the world, your giants that are against her, you're in debt, whatever it is that's going on in your life. All right. Now we have the water, which is the Word of God, our friends, our people that are checking on us and pouring the Word of God and praying for us. And now we have the Holy Spirit, which is the Son. It's our teacher. It's our guide. Now we have the perfect environment that we need for true spiritual growth to overcome failure. So let's say you're in a season right now where you're kind of dying. Let me tell you how. Listen, if a flower is not blooming, you don't change the flower. You take the plant and you go put it in a different environment. And you don't change that person. You just take it and remove it and put it in a different environment and encourage it to flourish and grow. If you're failing right now, it's not because you're not good enough. It's not because you're not getting water. Okay? Trust me, y'all. If you face the dirt with the Word of God, you will overcome any obstacle in your life with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, okay? We're in a dark place right now. The journey's too big for us. 
The giant's too big for us. Our team keeps losing. I don't know what we're going to do. Let me tell you what's going to happen. The sun will shine. The water will start pouring into your life. People will show up to encourage you. They always do. The word of God will start to line up with what the Holy Spirit asks of you. And you're going to start to overcome this, overcome the obstacles that are in your life. Jesus, whenever he was talking to his disciples, he says that you can move a mountain. Okay? Or adversaries in your life. If you just had the faith of a mustard seed. So, what is it that you have to do? Get some understanding from the Bible. Get some scriptures from the Bible. Google, what can I say against fear? Google, what can I say against anxiety? What can I say about sickness? Google, what can I look at scriptures for healing? To start believing and saying all day long like a mantra. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do, there's no condemnation through Christ. There's no condemnation through Christ. Change what you listen to. Listen to some worship, worship music. Start listening to the, some, some uh, promises of God. So, as the Holy Spirit, come into your heart, come into my life, and help me to overcome these giants that are in my life and these obstacles. Let me tell you something. Mounts, mountains will come crumbling down, y'all. Everything, the giants will fall. I hope this helps you to overcome failure, y'all. I love you, and God bless.